we are all changed, our normal changed on June 4th, 1994. When Antonio was first killed, um, Austin would ask me and for days, when's daddy coming home? When's, and he was three, when's daddy coming home? And I just, I couldn't find the right answer to give him other than saying some bad guys hurt daddy and he can't come home. I lost my husband, Antonio Terry, on the morning of June 4th, 1994. He was just uh, returning to the South Precinct from a by bus uh, downtown and ran into a guy jumping in front of cars off the Swift Albro exit. Antonio pulled ahead of a car on the side and walked back towards them to see what was going on. And he was recognized as a narcotics cop. And as he heard someone say he's a cop, he started to return to his vehicle and as a result was shot in the back. Um, he was able to return fire, get back in his car, drive to the South Precinct, and collapsed in the police parking lot. Buzzy Katzer was actually the first officer that got to him. And he didn't know who he was initially because Antonio was in plain clothes. He was driving a, a plane car, wasn't a police vehicle. And he said, Buzzy, I'm hit. And then everything happened. Uh, next thing I know, in, for, in the early hours of the morning, I got a knock at my door. And my world was just turned upside down. Just 10 days before Antonio was killed, we'd taken all the kids up to um, see the snow. And that's one of my favorite pictures because it's the last time the, the four of them are in the same picture. We had two kids and Austin was three, Colton was one, um, and his daughter, um, Vanessa, was 13. I think of Antonio every day, every day. And, you know, especially when we have these milestone events in our lives, you know, the boys graduate from high school, Vanessa graduates from college, Vanessa gets married, she has her children, he doesn't get to meet his grandchildren or play with them. Um, those things remind me on a daily basis of um, the loss that we have, uh, but I hope that he's smiling and, and seeing we're all doing okay, but we will never ever forget him. And it was, he just had such a great personality, he was a people person. And one of the things I remember is after he died, I got lots of letters and cards from people that he encountered. You know, Antonio would do the off-duty um, jobs like doing security in the bus tunnel. And this gentleman wrote and said, he asked him if he could charge their wheelchairs. And he knew he, he shouldn't do it, but he's, he saw this person in need and he let him do it and gave him some money to go get something to eat. But that's the kind of person that he was, is that he, someone had a need and he, he saw a way to, to help them. I think it's important to remember, you know, not just Antonio, but every officer. Um, it is a reminder of how dangerous this job is. And for us to be thankful for those who still want to do the job. Because we hear daily of officers losing their lives and we can thank you enough for what you do. You leave your homes, you leave your families, not knowing if you're gonna come back, but you do it anyway. And there's not a lot of people that can do that job. It takes a really special kind of person to have the drive and the determination and the passion to go and protect people they don't even know. I would say to the men and women of Seattle, Police, think about the balance. There's a work-life balance that you have to have. Take care of yourselves, take care of your families, make the time 
to spend time with your families because unfortunately you never know what may happen when you start your shift and don't live life with regrets.